ISO, yeah, we trending. Watch what you say, don't offend them. They keep in the real, they commend them. People like get your wife pregnant, but I ain't trying to be dependent. I need money, never ending. I'm talking a hundred percentage. I need the only you rent it. Whoa. What's up guys, we are back here in the Parker Performance Laboratory today and our goal is to share with you our tornado kit. A lot of guys have bought this and uh, just taken it to a shop to have it installed or you've had us to install it. Thank you if you have, by the way. Um, but we know that a lot of you are DIYers and we know that that's kind of where a lot of us connected with you early followers here on our YouTube channel. So we wanted to make sure we could bring this to you and we don't want to make it a boring you know, video. So we want to make sure that we come with the stuff that makes the install important. Uh, we are going to go ahead and do our best to create a blog post so you can follow along. That way if you have to pause this um, for something specific, um, and then also we'll have it there on the blog for you as well. But basically we're going to go over our entire tornado kit here today, and I'm going to share with you any of the tips and tricks that I focus on along the way of installing it, being that I've probably installed, uh, I don't know, a hundred of these by now. So uh, let's start with first and foremost, you're going to have this behemoth of a chiller, right? This is the race core from CV Fab. It is our number one selling product. It is our favorite intercooler on the market. A couple of things for you to be aware of. It comes with its own hardware. Um, the only snag there is we, when we're doing the install, we put four washers on all four of the studs that are gonna hold the intercooler to your front. If you wanna get a picture of some washers, we got, we just used four washers on the front of every one of these studs here. So that's a little trick. Um, if you don't have these, we're working with CV Fab. I'm sure he'll probably include those in his hardware kit at some point, as he's obviously worked with us hand in hand to bring you guys the best product available. So that would be the first trick. Uh, the second trick is getting this installed is, uh, is no easy feat. If you have a second set of hands, that's always gonna help. Um, and we have to take off the entire front bumper. We have to take off the crash bar, um, but it is gonna go back on. And if you have at the time you want to do a BMR crash bar uh, for your tubular front end for lightweight, this would be the best time to do it because everything's already going to be apart. Obviously, you're going to connect it to your turbo and to your throttle body with a set of charge pipes and couplers. So if you'll take a look here at our charge pipes and couplers, I've already got them laid out for you. And then in the hardline kit or in the uh, tornado kit, you're going to get the Parker Performance hardline kit as well. So that's already laid out here for you guys. And in that hardline kit, you're gonna attach it to the boost reference adapter and obviously the race port blow off valve. So the couple of tricks and stuff from there, uh, let's start here, I guess, with the race port blow off valve. So for starters, you're gonna get the race port blow off valve and it's gonna have both of these caps here on the top side and neither of them are gonna have hardware included um, already installed. So what we're looking to do at this point is we're looking to preset our blow off valve for success. Um, right now, if you were to go and install this in the car, uh, let's say your charge pipe was already there and all that jazz, you would need to be installing these uh, in the car when you can set these up on the bench and save yourself a whole lot of hassle and a whole lot of trouble. So before doing that, that's where the Teflon tape's gonna come into play. So we're gonna put the Teflon tape on the fittings that we're gonna install. And there's gonna be uh, two fittings that come in your bin from uh, Turbo Smart. You're gonna put the valve for the actual nipple rather, into the exit that is gonna be closest to the engine bay, okay? You're gonna cap the side that ends up being closest to the fender. This is so that we can run a clean line with our hardline kit, and it's because our hardline kit is specifically measured based on leaving from this port and not from this port. So you're gonna set that up on this side, and you're gonna set the cap up on the fender side, okay guys? One thing to note on your race port blow off valve is this has a V-band clamp that is going to secure to our V-band flange on the CV Fab charge pipes. Okay, uh, two important pieces here. One is gonna be that there is an O-ring inside of your TurboSmart blow off valve. Do not install this without this O-ring. Do not install this and pinch the O-ring. If you damage or crush or install this without the O-ring, you will have a boost leak. So again, same idea, let's pretend that your charge pipe's already in the car and you're gonna go and install this on the car. You're gonna be fighting to get the O-ring seated onto the flange. You're gonna be fighting to get the V-band clamp secure. We can do this all off the car on the bench before we go to the car for install. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna actually install our race port. We're gonna put it on the V-band clamp. We're gonna ensure that the O-ring is seated properly. That way it's all done off the car and it's done in an easy environment where we are setting ourselves up for success and not failure. So that's gonna be your race port blow off valve. 
Next up, we've got our TurboSmart uh, Boost Reference Adapter. The only hardware we're looking for out of that bag at this time is gonna be one barb and one cap. Uh, you do wanna be careful in going through the product because our cap uh, was stuck inside one of the um, one of the clamps and I didn't notice it and I thought we were missing it. So, that we're looking to use is gonna be... Dun, 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 dun. Oh boy, they gave us, of course they would. Why wouldn't they? Why would they not give us a cap on the one that we're filming? When we're just... No plug. No plug. Sweet. So, <laughs> can we look at our other boost service adapters and see if we have one with the plug? Make sure that you shake uh, your uh, shake, shake your bag enough. So uh, you do only need the one the one cap and the one barb at this time. You're going to have the third hole over here, which we're going to add the uh, fitting that comes in the Parker Performance Hardline kit. It's going to look something like that. So this is the way we're going to set up the Boost Reference Adapter. Again, same idea here. Um, I'm just going through the steps at this moment, um, and I want you to do this stuff all on the bench before you go to the car for install. So after you've got your Boost Reference Adapter unpackaged and you've got it premature, you know, you're just going to kind of set it up to kind of know where you're at. You're going to come back. You're going to obviously tape these. You're going to get them final installed, right? This hose is going to be for your purge valve, and then this little clip is going to secure your Boost Reference Adapter to the nipple on your intake manifold. Uh, from there, we've got our hardline kit. The main pieces of the hardline kit are the fittings, kind of like what I've already shared with you there. Uh, we've got a chair cap so that you can circulate your uh, DIY blow-off valve mod, the chair cap $1 blow-off valve mod for you guys. Of course, it comes with the hardline itself, which you can select multiple colors. We've got, I believe, red, orange, yellow, blue, and black. Um, and then, of course, it's also gonna come with a handful of zip ties if I can get them out of the bag. And another piece of the um, purge valve hosing. Now this is included in our hardline kit and also in your uh, boost reference adapter if you've ordered them separately. Um, if you order them from us at once, you may get both of them because we already pre-packaged these. We do these in advance. It's okay. If you wind up having two of those hoses, keep one. If it fails, you have a backup, okay guys? Uh, also, inside your hardline kit, you will find uh, an instruction, the instruction sheet specifically for the hardline kit. Um, this is a front and back. It goes over what plug goes where, what cap goes where, and how to use those. Again, we're going to be covering those specifically here with this install, but in the event that you want to take a look at it, you have written printed material as well. So this is for Mr. Edwin's car. In addition to doing the hardline kit, in addition to doing the tornado kit, we also lowered his car today. We put some GT uh, four piston brakes on the front and we're also gonna do part of our maintenance pack. We're gonna be doing the ruthenium pre-gaps plugs along with the upgraded low pressure fuel sensor. That's why when uh, we have the tools list, you'll see on there we need an extension and a spark plug socket, as well as a 12 millimeter and a 24 millimeter uh, wrench because that's how you're gonna remove, and you can use a crescent if you need to, but that's how you're gonna do the low pressure fuel sensor. Moving down the table into our final piece here to share with you on the table before getting started with doing any work is the actual charge pipes and couplers. You'll notice that the coupler here, or sorry, the charge pipe here has the 50, 50 millimeter opening for the race port blow off valve. This is again where we're gonna be careful to make sure that our O-ring is seated perfect here. We're gonna obviously, the reason why I told you guys in the parts list to use WD-40 is we wanna squirt the WD-40 on the edges here as you're sliding your couplers on. Um, it's just gonna make your life a lot less miserable. And then on the other side, coming into the throttle body, one main uh, tip or trick is that you wanna make sure that this is tight. I remove it off of every single charge pipe and then I tape it and then I install it. That way it's not only tight, but it's also airtight and it's not gonna come off. I have had customers install their charge pipes without tightening this and then they have a boost leak as well. Um, so let's make sure that we tighten that before install. Now, each set's gonna come with its own clamps and couplers. I don't want you to get confused. When you're doing this install, when you're unboxing your stuff, the best rule of thumb I can give you is to unbox the couplers and the clamps with the associated charge pipe only at that time. Don't open both charge pipes and all eight clamps and all four couplers because you're likely to get confused if you've never done this before. I've done hundreds of these so I could have them on the floor and look at them and go, oh, that's the right clamp, that's the right coupler for this size. Okay, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at the throttle body side, right? Coming from the intercooler down to the throttle body. So you're gonna have your throttle body in the vehicle 
and you're gonna place your clamps in this fashion. You can orient the CV Fab logo to be in the top location, and you can orient your clamps to where they're accessible from the center of the engine bay, and this is gonna be most helpful for you with both the installation and removal or service in the future. Then on the bottom side, we're gonna do a very similar setup, and these you're gonna orient in the manner of, sorry, I think I had it backwards there, like this where you're gonna orient it again to where it's gonna to be to the center of the engine bay. You want those clamps so that they're serviceable. When you install them in this manner, you literally can service this without even taking the car off the road in the event that you have a, a charge pipe failure or something blows off or a coupler blow. You could service this from inside the motor with the frickin' motor running if you needed. So this is why we orient them all on the uh, driver's side charge pipe towards the center of the engine bay. Now on the driver's side charge pipe, all four of those clamps should be an 8173 if you've got a race core intercooler. This is an 8173 clamp. This is the size clamp that you need to fit around successfully all four ends of your charge pipes on the driver's side there. Now a little different on the, on the turbo side, a little different. You've got obviously a, a much smaller uh, coupler here. This is going to actually attach to the turbocharger itself. Um, and those are going to be 6254 on the turbocharger side itself and a 7567 on the charge pipe side, okay? And then that's obviously going to go in something to the manner of like so. Rawr. So that you again have access to them. You wanna be able to make, you're not just installing it to install it, you're installing it so that in the event of a future service, you have access to do so easily without you know any headache or, or heartache. So this is gonna be the orient that we're looking to do. That's gonna go down on the turbocharger like so. And then on the bottom side, you're gonna do the same thing as you did on the, uh, on the cold side charge pipe. You're gonna orient in the same manner. You're looking to bring these towards the center of the engine bay. So if you were to go this way, they're gonna bury into the windshield wiper reservoir and all kinds of stuff on that side. Whereas on the other side, they're gonna bury into like the, the K-frame. So look, we just wanna orient them in a manner that's gonna make sense for us uh, for long-term serviceability. So that's, I would say, the extent of my tips and tricks before getting started. Um, I'm gonna have the boys continue to record and I'm gonna jump into doing the install. What I'm gonna do at first is I'm just gonna go ahead and set up those things that I just mentioned. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the boost reference adapter. I'm gonna actually tape those fittings, get them locked in. I'm gonna set up the, um, the charge pipes. I'm gonna go ahead and get them WD-40 and started on the intercooler charge pipes. Uh, so I'm gonna work on that stuff here on the bench. That way we can get ready and then we'll start pulling the car apart. All right, so let's start with preparing your race board. First and foremost, you're gonna have your V-band clamp on the bottom. Obviously, we're already taking note of the O-ring. We're gonna make sure it stays in there. You're gonna use a 5 30 seconds Allen key. You're gonna crack open the V-band here for the tightening so that you have access to rotating it at your leisure, okay? Then next, you're gonna to have take, take, to take your hard line kit and you're gonna get the one fitting out that's the larger fitting. And as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna actually install that in the engine bay side of the race port. So as you're gonna mount, our goal is to mount this race board in the engine bay so that this is visually pleasing. And the goal with the clamp is gonna to be to install it similar to this. You may have some interference here with an AC line. Um, if it is, just rotate it a, a smidge. Uh, our goal is to keep it as um, parallel to one another as possible. That way from the visual side, it's very pleasing. And then from the serviceability side, you have access to your fittings and they're easy to, you know, future service, right? So again, 530 seconds here, crack that open. You're gonna get your large fitting out of your Parker Performance Hardline kit. And then you're gonna get your cap out of the TurboSmart Race Port kit. We're gonna tape this. Now, depending on when you get your kit and who the vendor is that we're buying our fittings from for the Hardline kit, your Hardline may or may not come with the Teflon already installed. If already installed, you do not need to add it. Obviously, if it's bare fittings, we do prefer that you add the Teflon and add that for added protection. So in this instance, this has the Teflon on it. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward with installing this fitting. And in this instance, that's gonna be a 12 millimeter. And we're just gonna tighten until it's snug and give it like about an eighth of a turn there. Okay, so now it's snug, just one little turn, ready? We're gonna, good, she's good and tight. Now let's go ahead and tape this other fitting. Now this is gonna be the actual cap 
that cap from TurboSmart is a 3 16 Allen key. And so you're gonna have to install it like so. And we're gonna go ahead and tape that up. Okay, once you've taped your fitting, we're gonna go ahead and install that. And again, this is on the side that's gonna end up closest to the fender. So away from the engine bay. Run that down, again tight and about an eighth of a turn. All right, so our fittings are now set up. We've got our hardline kit here. We've got our, our cap on this side. Uh, we've got our uh, V-band clamp here is loose and ready for install. We've got our O-ring. So now we're gonna actually place this onto our charge pipe. The charge pipe is gonna mount in this manner inside the vehicle with this U-shaped going towards the turbo and the straight section going down towards uh, the intercooler. Again, our goal here is to seat this O-ring. And so I actually sometimes will pull this O-ring out and set it on there just so that I know that it's seated. And you can use a little bit of silicone like um, or a small dab of grease, a, a very, very small, because grease can actually make these swell. So if you're gonna use a piece to hold this in place, I just want you to use a very small dab of it. I don't want a ton of, of product on here. So you're gonna put a dab because as you can see, when you let go, the O-ring kind of wants to fall off. But if you're gonna try and do something, you can use um, just a dab of silicone, a dab of grease to hold that in place. And then take your 5.30 seconds, and you're gonna open it as much as you need to secure it onto the actual flange. Now, here's a tip. If you go too far, this threaded rod will actually unthread itself from the back of the second um, fitting here. And let's just go ahead and do that so you can see what'll happen so that you're prepared and you're not scared in the event that that does happen. So what'll happen is it'll unthread from the second fitting there and it will come out of the race port. Now, the importance of doing that on camera for you guys and showing you now is if you look here, there is an orientation specific manner that that must go back inside. So there's a gap and then there's actually threading. The gap should be away and the threading should be towards the center. And then this one, you're gonna go able, be able to go right back through it and then you'll be able to start threading again. So in the event that that does happen and they do fall off, fear not, it's not a big deal. We can get through this together. Okay, so now that you've got it loose, you've already got your O-ring fitted here nicely to the charge pipe. You're gonna actually expand. And as you can see, as I'm pulling on the V-band clamp here, it'll expand all the way out. And then you should be able to set your blow off valve over top of that O-ring. And again, we're looking to have a nice snug fit like that. See how it just kind of got into place right there? Everything's smooth, there was no fighting it, there was no like uh, having to wiggle wall it. No, pull it tight. If it's fighting you, pull it back apart. Take this all the way out to the edges again, re-secure your O-ring, everything should be good. Now, again, we're gonna kind of preset this so that it's uh, visually pleasing in the vehicle. So I'm just gonna kind of set the Turbo Smart in place and then we're just gonna run the 530 seconds down. You're not attempting to final tighten this right now. You are, however, trying to tighten it enough so that the V-band clamp stays in place while you're fighting with the couplers on both the turbo and the intercooler side so that this does not fall off and then damage or lose your O-ring. That's our main purpose here. We are going to final tighten this in the engine bay um, and all that do, we'll, at that time, all we'll have to do is pop that loose one time, correct our fitment, run it down, tighten it, and it'll be secured finally. All right, so once we've gotten our race port set up on our charge pipe, the next step is just gonna be, and again, these are all preliminary setups. We're not final installing anything. I'm not tightening the clamps. I'm not tightening the V-band. We're just preliminary installing it so that way when we can start working on the car, they'll go in where they need to go. So we're gonna go ahead and put the charge pipes on, both the lower and the upper side here, and then we'll cast this to the side and we're gonna move on to the other charge pipe. Before we do that, and to make our jobs easier, use whatever can of silicone, WD-40, whatever you have in your arsenal. If you don't have it, go pick it up, it's real cheap, and it'll make your life a whole lot easier uh, because all we're gonna do is we're just gonna squirt the inside of the couplers and then just a little dab on the actual charge pipe itself. 
Ooh. Once you squirt that in there, we just give it a good polish. You'll notice I'm wearing shop gloves. Um, I don't really wear them all the time, but if you're using chemicals and stuff, it's a good idea. So, a little shop rag action. Again, our intention here is to create orientation that is um, both serviceable and beautiful, right? We want to be able to have the CV Fab logo visible and like so. It'll be like that. And so we're not gonna final clamp tighten or anything like that. These are just getting them in place. And then once they're on the car, we can rotate as accordingly uh, so that it looks good as well. Oh, I was trying not to get that on our table, boys. My bad. Damn. See, I even sprayed it over here, you know? I'm trying to be smart about it. Making a mess, bro. Big IQ, you know, and then I still fucked it up. You're welcome. Anything else I can do for you, boys? <laughs> I got you. All right, so. Just because this one does like to fight you a little bit when it's going over this little hump, which again, this is one of the reasons why we like the CD Fab product is because they put a ridge in their charge pipes that helps keeps the charge pipes from sliding past that ridge once you put your clamp on. You just wanna make sure you're clamping north of those ridges so that way the clamp has good bite. Something like that, okay? Now, the distance, the length here is all gonna be dependent on um, you know, once you get it installed. So again, I'm not final clamping or anything. We are just placing this. And then because we put the WD-40 in here that allowed you to slide it on, it'll also allow you to slide it both forward and backwards for distance. And you won't notice until you're going to actually install it on the charge pipe where you want to position that. Now we're just gonna do the same thing on the throttle body side. And, and the throttle body side is where we're gonna actually tape that plug and we're gonna tighten that as well. All right, so for the cold side charge pipe on the throttle body side, as we mentioned earlier, you're gonna use this, um, the cap here. This is really convenient because it's good for single, um, a single nitrous or uh, meth nozzle to be placed here. But in the event that you don't have either nitrous or meth, you do need to have this cap because if not, it will be a leak. So remove it, you're gonna be using a five millimeter Allen key and we're just going to tape it and then reinstall it. Yeah, yeah we're, just, we're just back in here filming, you know? All right, and so once we've taped our cap, we're simply gonna place it back and we're gonna tighten it in place. Again, remember this is important, boys, because if you don't do this, the chances are that this is gonna be loose when you get it out of the package. And if it is loose and you install it, there will be enough pressure built up that will push this out of the threads and it will be a leak. So we wanna take the front side, the time on the front side, and make this, uh, you know, obviously perfected and not gonna be a leak for you. So run it down, get it tight, about an eighth of a turn, all good. Clean up any loose uh, Teflon tape. And now she's ready to receive her couplers as well. We've brought those over from the other side. Um, and then again, and this is gonna be one of those things where orientation on the car is always gonna be easier. Um, when I set them up, they almost always end up where the fitting is gonna be towards the engine side. And so that means that this side here will end up being your throttle body, and this side here will end up being for your uh, intercooler. Um, and it ends up kind of being, instead of being straight on, it's oftentimes a little bit cockeyed or whatever. Uh, again, you're not gonna know that until you're under the car and you're actually placing it for final fitment. All right, uh, so I usually go in with, again, if we're pretending that we're on the car, CV Fab logo up and kind of something like that. And again, with orientation of the clamps being serviceable from the engine bay, so something like that. A little squirt on the pipe on this side because sometimes the little fight us. My orientation's wrong, hold on. I think it's gonna go like that. And if it's not, we'll come back and we'll redo that. But something like that. Clamp, clamp. And again, you're not tightening any of this stuff yet, and it's got good amount of lube in it so that you could rotate it and whatnot once you're in the car and actually installing it. Okay, so we're gonna start tearing into removal of the parts on the car. This car is already equipped with an air raid intake tube, um, and we've already done the uh, chair cap mod on that. 
So again, you guys might already have those mods and we're still sending it in our kit. So just set that to the side, you'll have an extra, maybe you'll have a friend that needs it in the future. We're gonna go ahead and remove the radiator cover. We're gonna go ahead and remove the front bumper. We're gonna remove the crash bar. We're gonna remove the engine cover, the coil packs, the air intake. We're gonna pull it all apart, boys. Okay, so we're just gonna start by removing the radiator panel. Get your trusty trim removal tool. There are eight of these here on the top side. And you just wanna be careful not to damage them or the radiator cover upon removing them. And once we get these free, then we're gonna go move forward with removing the actual bolts that hold the bumper in place. You're gonna remove all of them. I am a little OCD, probably more than most. And um, part of what I do is when I reinstall these, I put them all in the same direction just because I'm bored and have nothing else to do with my right, life. Hold up, cut. Okay, once you've got your radiator cover removed, you're going to be exposed now to the five and a half millimeters that are on either side here, and then the eight millimeters across the top. Now, once you get these done, you're not done on the top side, we will move down into the fender with a 10 mil and a long extension and a swivel. So we'll start here across with the eight and the five and a half. Switch over to the five and a half now and just do the two in the far corner here. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the 10. We gotta get an extension and a swivel. This is my drug of choice for removing the two 10 millimeters that are holding um, the bracket in on the 18 and up vehicle. If you guys have worked on the S550 chassis before, the uh, 15 to 17 Gen 1 cars have a really nightmare of a nut that's sticking in there and a lot of them will end up having uh, ripping off the, the bumper tabs and end up with click latches. They've repaired that for us on the 18 up cars um, and then this is a lot easier to get to now from the top side. We use, uh, I believe this is a 12 inch extension with a swivel and a 10 mil all quarter drive because these are easy bolts, nothing crazy. So we're gonna go in uh, through here behind the headlight and uh, on both sides. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be coming down at an angle here to try and get to the two bolts that are right here. So you'll have a bolt on either side and then a little Christmas tree in here, a little tab that's gonna hold it in place. So we're gonna undo both of those on either side. Okay, so you can see we are just beyond the headlight here and you have a little passageway that is large enough to fit your hand inside. And if you look down in there, you can see our two 10 mils. And then in the middle of both of them, you'll see the Christmas tree bit. So all we're gonna do is remove that. Voila. And we're gonna do the same on both sides. All right, so now that you've gotten all your bolts across the top and the front, you've gotten both sides uh, dismounted with the tens. Now you're gonna come underneath the car and you're gonna use your trim removal tool and your seven millimeter. Your main focus, and it's gonna depend on what model you have and if it's, um, a performance package and all that but most cars are going to have two here at the back right here in front of the uh the drip tray and then you're going to have two here on the front sometimes there's four across the back two across the front you don't need to undo all of these across the front we're just dismantling the belly pan but leaving the belly pan attached to the bumper because we're going to move the nose cone all in one shot so we're going to start with removing the sevens now as I mentioned, it's gonna depend on what kind of model you have as to if there's additionals. Um, once you disconnect all of this stuff here, you may have additional seven millimeters here in the corner that you have to re remove. Um, but let's pretend that those aren't there and let's just go forward with it so that we can approach that together. So once you've removed your floor, you should see that the belly pan is loose from the K-frame. The thing remaining holding it up is gonna be your clips here. So we're gonna go ahead and use our trim removal tool and take those free. So you've got two large clips at the corner of the belly pan. These secure it to the actual K-frame. The one on either side. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay, and so now you should be completely loose from the K-frame itself. And then from here, we're gonna move on into the fender liner and work on removing the, pin, the pins from the fender liner. All right, so now that we're back inside the fender liner, there's about five or six clips on the inside of here that we need to disconnect as well. So we're just gonna again use our trim removal tool to remove these. And earlier in the video, we told you that you might need some additional clips. Oftentimes the OEM Ford clips will be damaged or broken. And then if you see this one here, if they have this style clip here, these are one-time use in my opinion and they are garbage. So we throw those away and replace them. 
Okay, so once you've undone all of those clips here, you should be fully free now from the nose cone from the fender liner. And then this would be just repeated on the other side and then we will be ready to strip the, uh, the nose cone off. All right, so these are the ones I'll say in the OEM one time use push pins. They're the ones that you push in like this and they come out. You can reuse them. I just tend not to because they are really weak. They end up expiring very soon. So we keep these in stock here at the shop and we replace them with some nice OEM push pins. Okay, once you've removed all of the clips, you're gonna peel back your fender liner. You're gonna follow this fog light housing all the way forward. You're looking for one clip on the 18 and ups. If it's a 15 to 17, you will have three, to three total clips, so two additional clips. But either way, you wanna disconnect your lights. If you have like an RTR grill or anything like that, you would wanna disconnect that at this time as well. You'll do this for both sides and then the nose cone is ready to remove. So, you've removed your radiator cover, you removed all the bumper bolts across the top, you removed your two 10 mils on either side, you've pushed the Christmas tree down on either side, you've undone all of the bumper clips inside of the fender wells on both sides, you've disconnected the fog light on both sides, um, and you've removed the bottom belly pan for, for uh, seven millimeters and the couple of push pins there. Your entire nose cone should now remove. Yusuf's gonna help me pull this up and off the vehicle and we're gonna place it on the straddle over there. Okay, Alright, so now we're going to move forward removing your grill shutters. Um, these are not uh, retainable with using the race core. If you're doing a street core or a gust NATO, these are retainable. Um, we just don't recommend keeping them. Listen, we are not um, Ford engineers, but we're smarter than them. <laughs> so you'll start by removing the two large clips. These are trash. And then you're gonna move forward with removing two bolts here and then a total of six bolts across the front and they're all eight mil. trash you can keep them you can if you're smart you'll save them in the box that's like extra parts um, because someday you might need a nice little bolt that's got a shouldered washer on it and that'll be coming in real handy so once you've removed all of those you can see that you are whoa you got ahead of me there okay so your factory uh, this is a stabilizer bar that goes through the frame horns on the uh, outermost edge of your k-frame uh, this is going to be removed because you're actually going to have an integrated version of this on the bottom of your race core intercooler. I wasn't ready for that to come out, so it surprised us. Congratulations. Um, however, you can see that the grill shutters are now uh, loose. You're able to kind of maneuver and manipulate them. You need to do all of that in order to get into the back side to remove the five and a half millimeter that's in the back here. There's one five and a half millimeter that holds the bracketry here together. You're going to separate that. And then once that's separate, you can then pull the grill shutters out from the front here. Before we do that, just so I don't damage it, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the ambient temp sensor here out of our way. We're just gonna use the trim removal tool to pull that off of our crash bar. So we're just gonna tuck that to the side and we're gonna put that back later. If you don't have an electric uh, version of an Easy Ratchet or something similar to this, I strongly suggest you get them if you're gonna be working on your car frequently. I think this is about $120 investment for your toolbox. Um, it's one of the greatest tools you'll ever own, especially in an instance like this where we're going somewhere inside somewhere that's a tight cramped space. And instead of having to be in there with a quarter drive and an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn at a time and farting around with it for an hour, you go zip and she's gone. So we're gonna dive into the back here and get this one five and a half mil. I think there may be two actually in this one. Okay, so in this instance, there's a pair of five and a half. So we're just gonna pull both of these out. And as I mentioned, we're gonna separate the two pieces. And now you can remove your active grill shutters from the vehicle. Oh, just kidding, forgot. You have to disconnect the one clip that holds for the electronics. And this is just gonna be something that when we're done, we're actually gonna tuck it in here with a zip tie and keep it tucked away nicely. Okay, a couple more steps before we're fully done with prep to remove the intercooler. 
one of those things is that we're gonna take this active grill shutter line and instead of just letting it dangle, we're gonna go ahead and secure it into the OEM gray clip and then we're gonna use two zip ties to place that onto the harness, just keeping it clean OEM Plus style uh, installs. So uh, the next steps here before I move on into the engine bay, we do have one last piece on the front here that is attached that we need to remove. These are the crash bar support beams. Um, they, you may be able to get them to fit. I've never fought them. Again, this is one of those uh, less is more, less headache for me is more better. Uh, so the core is so large that it does impede upon here. I've heard of people bending them and look, I'm not gonna mess with them. They're gonna come off. So 13 millimeter, you got a couple of them on either side and we're gonna send these guys into our extra parts bin. Okay, so this is a, an optional um, step in the process. There are some plastic air dams here in the front that uh, you can trim. And I do typically trim them on all the installs that I do. So I keep a pair of scissors. These are more like a utility scissor. All right, let's get to cutting. Zip, 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 zip. All right, so this is about how much we end up cutting off is just the, the bottom flap of that. I still retain the majority of the back pieces here. They do cover the end caps on your condenser. Um, if you do leave them, pull them in and leave them exposed, it's not a big deal. Our main issue with the condenser is we just want the intercooler to not hit it. We have had some intercoolers where um, I installed them uh, maybe in haste or whatever the case may have been and I didn't pay as much close of attention to the separation between the intercooler and the condenser. And over time it will damage the condenser, you will have an AC leak. So let's not cause that issue for you guys. Again, most of the time uh, we do this and we fuck the stuff up on the front end so that you don't have to. Um, that way we could teach you how to do it without doing it uh, at the cost of losing your AC or having to replace a condenser and so on and so forth. So we're just cutting those out for a little bit of extra clearance. You can leave them and fight them and flap, you know, pull the flaps away and try and slide the intercooler in. I just remove them much easier. Okay, so we've completely prepared the vehicle for installation on the front end of the intercooler. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the air intake. Again, this isn't something I would always remove, but for you, if you're a DIYer at home, it's definitely gonna give you some increased usage space here. Um, and then for us, for filming purposes, we're gonna go ahead and do it. So in this instance, this car is already equipped with an air raid intake tube. So we're gonna use a couple of eight mils here to release it from this side and from the turbocharger, we'll disconnect the PCV hose and then this whole entire tube will come out. Um, once the tube is out, we're gonna go ahead and move forward to removal of the charge pipes from the throttle body and the turbocharger. That's gonna be done with a seven millimeter and your choice of uh, swivels and sockets and extensions. Um, once we've gotten all of that out of there, in this particular instance, we're gonna move forward on this car to go ahead and remove the engine cover and the spark plugs as well, because he is also getting our maintenance pack. Um, and then we'll get right back into the install. All right guys, so in this particular instance, this customer had previously upgraded to an air raid intake tube. So as I'm removing his intake tube, I'm realizing that some of you are going from bone stock conditions. In the event that you're having a stock tube that's being removed, there's one extra step that you won't see here in the video. And so I wanted to share that with you here today before we go any further. You will have your recirculation tube that's attached to your blow off valve and it's also attached to your air intake tube. All you need to worry about here is getting a large set of pliers, removing these two and pulling off one side or the other and then remove your air intake tube. That's gonna help you uh, have everything removed off the blow off valve so that way you can get the blow off valve and the charge pipe all out as one unit because you are gonna disconnect the electronic plug from the charge pipe as well um, that's, that's controlling your uh, blow off valve. But this is a piece that is not on that vehicle that we're not gonna have on B-roll so I wanted to share with it to you guys separately. All right, so now with your engine cover removed, your air intake out, both of your charge pipes out, your blow off valve disconnected, now you're ready to work on reassembly. Uh, one of the first steps you wanna do for reassembly is go ahead and you're gonna work on modifying your purge valve line here um, to use the boost reference adapter. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna step back to the table. We'll finish assembly on the boost reference adapter. If you remember earlier in the video, we talked to you about setting it up but we did not tape those fittings and tighten them in place. Well, well now we're gonna go back and finish that. We're gonna actually tighten that install up, button that all the way up, and then we're gonna come back to here to the purge valve and install all of that. Um, what we're looking to do is essentially, this is a vacuum source right here on the, on the intake manifold. So it's only got one barb coming out of it. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this single barb spot by putting the boost reference adapter there. And we're gonna have now a location where three different barbs can come out of that boost reference adapter. In our instance, we're gonna use one as a cap. We're gonna use one as a fitting to go to the blow off valve. And then the third one is the one we're gonna send back to the purge valve like factory. Um, so what we'll end up doing here is we'll remove this red clip that's a retaining clip. We'll push in the black clip here to remove this. We'll actually use a razor blade and we're gonna score this usually two or three times of scoring it, the, um, the black plastic. You don't need to push totally hard. You just need to push enough to score this. And then you're gonna score it two or three times and then that should peel right off the front of the plunger here on your purge valve. This is gonna be that six inch piece or four inch piece of hose that we showed you earlier in the video. And it's gonna clip right into your boost reference adapter. So we're gonna go ahead and build that boost reference adapter now. And then we're gonna go ahead and move forward installing it. Okay, so this is how we had set up the boost reference adapter earlier in preparation of showing you guys how to get everything set up. You're gonna cap the furthest setting uh, to the right. You're gonna leave the straight barb in the center. Then you're gonna put your uh, hard line kit fitting at the far left. So we're gonna pull these off and these two are gonna get taped. We'll reinstall those. They take a 532nd Allen key, an eight millimeter for the middle piece, and then a 13 millimeter for the end piece. Okay, so your fully assembled boost service adapter is gonna look something like this. You're gonna have your hard line, you're gonna have your purge valve, and you're gonna have your cap. Ultimately, we're gonna take this apart, slide this in its place, then we're gonna use this clip here, which is just the U-shaped, we call these Jesus clips, because when they don't go on, they go ping, and you go, Jesus! Uh, so we're gonna use the Jesus clip to hold it into place. And so now we're gonna use our razor blade and cut this off of our OEM purge valve. And you're literally just gonna score it probably two or three times in a row in the same spot. And it'll uh, separate like so. And then you should be able to see it separating like that. Once you've got it there, you've got it on the run, you can just pull it off. And we're gonna go ahead and release it from the bottom here. Red clip out, black push pin in, and then pull up. And then she's there and she's gone. And then again, same thing here. You can throw this in your spare parts bin, throw it away. It is of no use to you any longer. All right, so we're just gonna take, and what you're looking to do now with that removed is you're gonna replace it with your boost reference adapter that's already pre-assembled. And you're just going to slide her kind of into place like that. You don't wanna get crazy with trying to attempt to push it on here. Um, these are plastic intake manifolds. That barb can crack and cause a boost leak for you. Um, so try not to do that and don't force it. Uh, pull it back out, grease it, whatever you need to do. But it should go on, as you saw there, with relative ease. And once it does, you're gonna take our purge valve line here, and then you're just gonna work on securing it to the purge valve. Same thing being the case here. If you need to put some WD-40 on it to pull it down on there, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and put some zip ties in there. And then just down your line over here for now, because we're gonna end up running that across our um, wiring harness here with all of the zip ties that are provided to you in the PP Hardline kit. So this, this really should be your first upgrade uh, in the power department in our eyes. Um, we talk about doing things like the low pressure fuel sensor, the maintenance pack that has the purge valve and the good set of plugs. And in our top five modifications, we include the tornado kit. This is why. We live in Florida, a very hot and humid climate. The number one killer of power is a heat soaked intercooler. Clearly you can see with an intercooler that is much smaller than the CV5 race core. We are not going to dissipate the heat in the same quickness and manner that we are when we're using a larger core like this. Not only that, if you've ever driven the car, even in bone stock format, and you've gotten onto it maybe two or three times in a row on the highway, by that second or third hit, you're usually losing power and the car doesn't feel as quick. That's because the computer is very intelligent. It notices the heat soak and it begins to pull timing out. And so the car actually is slower. This is gonna help solve that for us. This is gonna put our customers in a more um, cooler condition for a longer period of time when beating on the vehicle, allowing the tune to stay with as much timing as possible while safe and while cool. So this is why we upgraded the uh, CV Fab race cores and this is why we throw these things in the trash. Back to the install. We do need to remove our intercooler uh, sensor here. This is gonna get transferred from your factory unit over to the CV Fab. So you use a Torx bit, a T25, and just zip that feller out of there. This is an OEM piece, you can keep it. 
Um, most of the time, what I'll have guys do is we'll pull out the sensor for being used on the TV Fab race core, and then we'll actually run this back into the same hole so that way you know right where it came from, right where it went, you're not searching for it later. All right, guys, so uh, now with everything prepped, everything out of the engine bay, we're gonna move on with installing parts big time here, okay? So we've already installed the BRA. Uh, we're moving forward with putting the intercooler on, then we're gonna move on to the charge pipes, then we're gonna finish everything up and button it all up. Uh, the first step to installing the intercooler actually physically is installing your um, sensor that came off your factory uh, intercooler. CV Fab is kind enough to provide you with its own hardware for installing this. One drawback to that, and it's something I forgot to mention earlier in the video, is that just the, uh, the it's an Allen key, so it's a, I think they call it a hex head or you know button head. And the uh, unfortunate thing is, is that when you tighten that all the way down, if you look here, it's it's like almost the identical size of the hole on the sensor. So because of that, and just because I'm a little OCD and a little bit of a brat, on every time when I'm doing that, I put a little washer around our little button head before we secure that. The other benefit to this is that sometimes when you're tightening that, if there isn't a washer used, you will actually get to the end of the threads and bury uh, the piece and it'll go tight loose and you have stripped it out. So this gives you the extra cushion of not having tightened it all the way down there to where it goes tight loose and you strip it. Um, again, this is something that I'll provide to Jason at CV Fab. He's been great with taking our suggestions. So hopefully it'll be something that included to be included in the kit in the future, boys and girls. Okay, the second step in preparing your intercooler for install is going to be installing the, um, these are gonna be the top bumpers and brackets. They just thread into the provided spots here on the top side of the intercooler. And you're gonna screw these all the way down to the bumper here. And then what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna put a bracket here um, with some additional hardware as well. And that's gonna how you actually fasten it to the vehicle. We're gonna come back to that. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and screw these ones all the way down and in. And then we're gonna take the little bumpers. Now, I guess that would be a good time to show you the difference so that you guys can not make this mistake. It's pretty simple to see that there's only two of one style bumper and that there's four of the other style of bumper. Uh, but there's large and small. The four small bumpers are gonna go across the bottom of the intercooler install, whereas the two larger bumpers are gonna be the ones you install on the top side. So we're gonna go ahead and thread these all the way in, and then we're gonna put these on the vehicle. Okay, so the four little bumpers that we were talking about, if you remember earlier in the install, the black crossbar had kind of fallen off a little bit in advance, and I didn't really need for that to happen at that time, but the importance of it having happened and what happened here is I wanna be able to show you guys the pitfalls so that you know how to overcome them. So what happens is normally we would get to the point of removing this now, and this would be trash. Bada boom, bada bing. And then you're gonna be installing these four bumpers here in these small clips. I think they're called J clips, um, nut certs, I don't know, something to this effect. So uh, you'll look on this side here on the passenger side that both of the units are there and in, and in uh, perfect condition for us to start screwing in. But if you'll come over here to this driver's side uh, frame horn, you'll see that one of them unfortunately fell out. So this is pretty common and don't freak out. Again, it's about showing you guys the pitfalls and understanding that you can get through them and work through the exercise here. So ultimately we're gonna use a pick to either pull that out um, or a flathead screwdriver to get in there and pull it out and you're just going to clip it back on in place just like this one is like this. And with that back in its location, then you can get to installing your four bottom bumpers. All right, guys, so we have done all of the steps we can. Uh, up until this moment, you have just been delaying the inevitable, which is trying to sneak this massive intercooler into that tiny hole. Um, right now, the only really thing that you can worry about is uh, practicing your curse words. At this point, you just wanna make sure you have You gotta have them all out of your system, because you're about to use them all. Uh, essentially what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and go into one side first and then kind of swing our way into the other side. Um, so essentially what we're gonna try and do is hold our tongue very correctly, um, say a little prayer to whoever you believe in and wiggle our way up and in there. So let's see how we can do about getting it in there. Your first thing is obviously you've got to clear your OEM wiring harness here. We've already zip tied our active grill shutter line up out of the way with that. 
This is all completely dangling. We've already got our ambient temp sensor up and out of the way. We've already cut our plastics here. So we're gonna try and maneuver this upwards and up and over. There we go. And then we're gonna try and slide it sideways to be a little clearance. And then, oh yes, you see we've got clearance, okay. Now you have to be careful here because you do have your sensor already installed. And remember, we did that in advance of installing this on purpose because it's easier to tighten it with this off and on the bench. So now you've cleared both of the frame rails. You're working on lining up your upper brackets, and then you're gonna come here and make sure that you can get your feet onto the small bumpers. And something like that, boys and girls. And something like that. Okay, so a lot less cussing than I was anticipating. Um, because I said my prayer, you see? And because I was preparing and I was practiced with my curse words, I didn't have to use them. So, our uh, main wiring harness is here. We did not damage the intercooler at all. Our upper brackets are here. They're gonna get fastened into the top. Down here below on our lower bumpers, we're gonna put the uh, 10 mil uh, hardware that comes with your CV Fab kit. This is where we're adding those four additional washers we talked about in the beginning. And uh, once we get that all tightened up, then we'll be moving on to the charge pipes. That was fucking awesome. I was gonna say. Yeah, yo, Ro talk, yo, that was fucking awesome. That yeah. was fucking awesome. I can actually just leave it. Yeah. I don't even have to cut anything. He oh, literally yeah, one-handed it. He literally just shoom. Listen, man, uh, that's how they're supposed to go. <laughs> when they don't go that way, something's aloof. It's been a bad day, etc. cetera. Uh, and we've heard people complain about using the race core because you have to, uh, we've heard people say remove, delete, uh, can't run with, crash bar. All of those things are false, unfortunately. That changes uh, the narrative for them. Um, I guess it's, you know, people saying what they wanna say or what they've heard in groups and, and regurgitating it. They're not speaking from experience, unfortunately. We've installed this intercooler literally on hundreds of cars. Um, this obviously is the easiest way to do it is by removing the crash bar and going in just like you saw. You go all the way up to the top, you clear your main harness, you get the one side to clear the K-frame all the way over, and once it clears it, kind of move it further over so you create your clearance for your second tube up and over the other one, all the way up and in. With that crash bar here, can you do that same exact approach? Possibly. But is it gonna create a fucking headache? Absolutely. We don't need to create headaches. We wanna, we wanna try and solve them in advance. Work smarter, not harder. So. It's in, crash bar will go back on, nothing will interfere. Couple of things to note as we're tightening this down. You just wanna make sure, like I said, we put the washers here on the small bumpers and then we'll tighten that up. When we're tightening these up here, you have to be careful not to let the intercooler lean too far back. As I mentioned earlier, you don't want to interfere with your condenser for your AC system. Um, again, as I was mentioning when we were installing, you wanna make sure that your sensor doesn't get banged up on the plastics here. You don't want to damage your intercooler sensor there. Um, so from here, we're literally just going to tighten this up and we're going to start plugging things in. We're going to put in the uh, intercooler plug. We're going to put in the charge pipes up top and we're going to move on to installing the blow-off valve. We've already got our washers on. We've got our 10 mils here holding them in place. This is just loosely fitted. Nothing is final fit. One thing to note when you're installing the bracketry here, remember we talked about having space between your intercooler and your AC condenser. If you turn the brackets to where they're outside like this, um this is going to be the most distance okay they're slotted and they slot front and back when they're in this position so we run the uh the l if you will to the inside uh towards the center of the hood uh latch this is going to allow you to unfortunately you won't be able to get the ratcheting side down in there uh, but you can do it by hand and it just takes a little bit of patience a little bit of time and then hold that still as you're tightening it but this is going to give you the most amount of clearance on the back side of your intercooler so that you can fit between your uh, intercooler and the AC condenser. So that's going to be the safest mounting location for your bracketry. Just like a little bureau of shit ever. Yeah. All right, so we've gone ahead and secured the 13s holding the uh, bracket to both the vehicle and to the, the intercooler. We've tightened our 10 millimeters down here. We've got our uh, harness loose. We've got our ambient temp sensor loose. One thing I do to make some extra space in here is I do disconnect the harness to the hood. Make sure you clip that back in before you go any further because if not, you're going to have hood ajar uh, dinging on your, on your dash. So if you've unplugged that, make sure you've plugged that back in. 
Uh, we've got a, like, I don't know, maybe like a 20 mil thick um, instruction sheet from our instructions. So that way you can kind of see there's plenty of room between the AC condenser and the intercooler. It is a tight fit, but just to show you that in fact there is space and it isn't hitting anything. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on now with installing the crash bar. We're gonna insert these back into the back side of the crash bar. We're gonna hang the crash bar here. We're gonna install our ambient temp sensor. And then from there, we're gonna lower the car and move on into the engine bay. One quick thing to note on your crash bar, in the event that you haven't upgraded this to a tubular crash bar and you're putting your stock one back on, and let's say you threw it to the side in the middle of the install and you forgot which is what, just take a look here and you can fashion it in either direction and just look for the side that has the drilled holes for the bottom. That's gonna be the bottom because the top side you can see does not have anything there. And the denotation there for you is that's where your ambient temp sensor is gonna have the double plug as seen here. And the single plug as seen here, they're gonna clip into the bottom side of your crash bar. Now, for those of you who are using a tubular crash bar, we uh, typically will take that and we will drill a couple of holes into the plastic here and we'll zip tie that ambient temp sensor to the bottom of the tubular crash bar. And the same thing, uh, if you're doing the tubular crash bar, we don't have the spots for these to go in like factory. So we remove these with your um, trim removal tool. And again, we'll just zip tie this entire harness to that tubular crash bar. Okay, so getting your crash bar home, a couple of tricks. Uh, first and foremost, you'll have the body color painted bolts. You should have two for either side. Start by using those to just hang your crash bar on the outside here. That way you're not fighting with trying to line up these ones on the inside. Um, you're gonna have the body colored bolts that will be the farthest two out on each side. Then you're gonna have the gray bolts which will be the middle two on each side. Then you're gonna have the gray uh, nuts that are gonna go on the back side of those bolts. So what I do is I'll start with the 13s here, uh, rather the outside just to hold it in place, that way it's good. And then I start tightening these gray 13s and what you want them to do is you want them to just start to expose themselves on the back and you're gonna actually take these nuts that are also a 13 and you're gonna go ahead and reach in from the bottom or the top, whatever you could do. And then that way you can go ahead and start the nut on those. If you don't, you have to do that after you tighten these. And then you're doing that with a, a ratchet or a wrench backwards and it's just more of a fight. And we could do it smart, not hard, right? So once we get those started, and you don't want them tight, boys and girls, you just want them started. Uh, because you're gonna actually tighten those by holding a 13 in place on the back of there while you're tightening them from the front. Get back. All right, so our goal there is we're wanting to make sure that the shoulder of this bolt is kind of laying back in the same exact place as it was earlier um, when you removed it. What'll happen is they've been kind of overspray has been painted on them. And so you should be able to kind of identify real close like, and then that way the alignment should be pretty close to like it was OEM. Now we're gonna grab our 13 and we're gonna hang that on the back ones that we just started and tighten from here. Okay. Do the same to the top. I don't know if I grabbed the whole Bingo. Now, once you've tightened them all from the front, the only thing you gotta do is snug up the 13 nut on the back there, and that will be completed as far as your crash bar reinstallation is concerned. Once you've done that, we can move on to installing charge pipes and blow off valves. A little in between here, okay. All right, so even though I mentioned it so that you could know the orientation of your crash bar when installing the crash bar, I never came back to it, and I wanted to make sure that we don't omit this. Once you've had your crash bar installed, you do physically need to hang the ambient temp sensor into those holes that I mentioned before. So the two holes will go there, and then the single hole for the harness will go there. That's what it should be finished like, and literally from here, um, you could reinstall the nose cone and then fight the charge pipe from up top, but we won't do the nose cone until the end. Uh, we are gonna move forward into the engine bay though and get installing the charge pipe for you. If you've made it this far, congratulate yourself. Just keep your eyes on the prize. We're almost through this thing. We're in the ninth inning. We're gonna be buttoning this thing up now. All we're gonna do is worry about charge pipe placement and fitment, and then we're gonna install the blow off valve, and then we can go and test drive this thing. Um, so, proud of you. You've made it this far. 
let's just pedal down here towards the end. And uh, our first thing up on the charge pipes is we're gonna be installing it here on the cold side, on the throttle body. Again, I showed you on the table where we have the intercooler charge pipe for this side. And I had the straight coupler here. And you saw how I had the orientation of the clamps facing towards the open section of the engine bay. What I like to do here when installing this is I actually go ahead and slide this coupler onto the throttle body with my CV Fab logo oriented the way I desire. And then I go ahead and tighten this first 10 millimeter clamp in place. I typically go ahead and remove the other three clamps at this time. I don't let the clamps dictate the orientation. I let the pipe and the couplers dictate the orientation. And then I'll come back and install the clamps on them once I'm satisfied with the orientation. Now, if you look here, you can kind of see from the top side, we are going to go underneath and show you specifics from the bottom. And if you look here, you can tell that the meth port, nitrous port that we've already secured previously, remember you had to tighten that, is kind of angled towards the back side of your radiator fan here. So that's kind of the orientation you're looking to create. You're coming straight off your throttle body. You've got both your T-clamps here facing the open side of the engine bay. You've got your meth port facing the back side of your radiator fan here. And that's essentially the fitment and the trajectory that we're looking to create. And then we're gonna wrap that up by fitment, uh, perfecting the fitment on the bottom side where the intercooler is gonna attach to that charge pipe. All right, so here from the bottom side, what we're worried about here is fitment on the intercooler. You wanna make sure your couplers as far down on the intercooler as possible. Again, we want our clamp serviceable, so we want this towards the open side of the engine bay. And here's the fitment we're looking for here. This TV Fab logo is kind of angular. It's not quite uh, you know, parallel to the ground, so it's kind of angled, and then it comes up and in, and then you have plenty of pipe here, and then you can secure your upper charge pipe clamp here. Again, my idea with the couplers and the clamps is we want them serviceable. So this is all facing the inside uh, open access area of the engine bay. If you were to have that rotated on the back side, it would be difficult to get to. If you were to have this over here on the back side, it would be difficult to get to. So again, our, our goal here is perfect alignment, perfect fitment. You don't want any crimping or cre um, uh, creases, large creases in your bottom coupler. Um, you want to make sure that the coupler is all the way down on your charge pipe uh, on the uh, intercooler side and also all the way up on the charge pipe itself. All right, so you've secured your clamps on the cold side here on the throttle body and at the uh, intercooler itself. You've already got the hot side over here. You've already got it kind of prematurely laid out. Remember, we did that preemptively early. Um, we had kind of loosely tightened our clamp here with the V-band for our race port. We had kind of loosely settled up with the location of the race port. As you can see here, I do have the clamp a little loose. We do have the ability to maneuver that. This is what I was mentioning earlier about the interference potentially from the AC line. Um, so you just want to make sure that you have this to where it's visually appealing. We're going to go ahead and uh, what we do, obviously, WD-40 is your friend. So squirt the inside of your couplers. And I always place the coupler on the turbo first. Go ahead and you can secure and tighten this first clamp here that secures it to the turbocharger. You can lock that one down. Then what I do is I slide the bottom coupler in onto the actual intercooler and I go all the way to the bottom of the outlet pipe there, or actually I guess that's the inlet pipe, um, on the intercooler and I tighten the bottom clamp there. So now your furthest clamp on the intercooler, your furthest clamp on the turbocharger, those two are both tight. And now all you're doing is you're working your charge pipe into those coupler tops and bottoms. And once you've done that, again, with WD-40 as your friend, now you can place your re uh, remaining clamps and, and button those up. We're gonna go ahead and take you to the bottom of the car and show you the fitment, so that way you can see the orientation. Um, and then we'll come back up top here and we're gonna button up this race port and install the hard line and install the intake. You're ready for a test drive almost. Okay, so once you've tightened those uh, clamps, now that you've wiggled your charge pipe in to both the turbo side and the inlet, uh, right? Yeah, inlet side of the intercooler. Uh, now we're gonna finish the install. This is when we're gonna do our final placement here with our uh, 530 seconds, uh, yep, 530 seconds Allen key. We're gonna tighten our, our V-band clamp here of the TurboSmart race port. We're gonna go ahead and run our hard line kit and we're gonna basically follow our OEM wiring harness there and we're gonna tuck that up and in there. My goal with the zip tie placement on the hard line kit, you've got uh, OEM uh, wiring harness tie downs on like every couple of inches here. 
And so I just kind of piggyback in that location our zip tie placement. So that way it kind of looks, it's like, you know, not out of place. It's in the OEM location there. The one uh, caveat to that is when you're making this turn here around the front side of the engine bay, you do have to kind of put one there in the middle of no man's land to keep her tight and secure there. And the goal here is to just, like I said, you're gonna kind of follow the OEM wiring harness here because it is gonna keep the hard line out of the way of any uh, accessories, any components, any moving product, you know, obviously you've got fans, pulleys, belts, all kind of good stuff running around in the engine bay. This will keep that line safe and protected and out of the way of all of those things. Now these zip ties came in your hard line kit. We include enough of them to do what we do and the way that we install this. Uh, we include enough of them to do that and then one extra one for your chair cap in the event that you don't have a chair cap and you are adding that. Remember we include that even if you don't need it. Um, like I said, send it back to us or something. I don't know, put a, put a sticker from your local town or something and ship it back to us and we'll tell jokes about you or something, I don't know. But that's a wrap on the Hardline kit right there. Now we're going to secure and final fit our V-band clamp here. And in this instance, we're using that 532nd Allen key. We're just checking here, like I mentioned before, we just kind of want this to look presentable. You don't want race port sideways over here and all goofy. And there's just, you know, no reason for it to be, uh, you know, offensive to the eyes when you can keep it kind of looking OEM plus, right? She should be pretty good there. You can hear it kind of burying itself nice and tight. This is what I was mentioning here before where I mentioned that this can interfere with your AC line. We do just make sure that the plastic covering here is up against that in the event that it is there. You can of course always rotate that a smidge so that way it's not touching it. It shouldn't be an issue. This is a rubber line and you are going up against the plastic part. Should not be an issue. In the event that you find it being an issue, definitely un I would loosen this uh, and rotate that and you'd be good to go. Uh, you guys may remember our good friends at TurboSmart used to offer something very similar to this packaging here. This was the infamous TurboSmart check engine light defender. This product was allowing you to plug this in and keep the dummy light from coming on on your dash. Um, and unfortunately with the EPA crackdown, that is no longer a product that is offered or sold in the mainstream. Uh, with that being said, we've come up with our own version of it. Um, we essentially found the correct adapters and uh, the correct resistors that will allow that to test that check engine light plug to make sure that your uh, blow off valve plug is in fact working. So this is only being sold as a test unit. You plug this into your check, uh, to your uh, factory blow off valve to check and see if your blow off valve is actually functioning. Uh, these will be included in the kits going forward. We've just finished testing on our three vehicles that we had out and they've been out for over 90 days in the vehicles with no issues. We've had them tested on EcoBoost Mustang, Focus ST and Fiesta ST. So we will be offering this going forward. And for the guys that didn't get one because of the time frame when they were released, drop us an email, send us a PM, we'll work on getting you a setup. Uh, but this is gonna plug in right now as we move forward. Uh, you're gonna tuck this into your factory harness, just like so. Bada bing. And then the only thing we do there is we tuck that into the two zip ties there and tuck her away as well. Now one thing to note when you're tightening your zip ties on this hard line, you don't need to crease it. You don't need to cinch it down so tight that it's putting a, uh, a, a clamp uh, force that is gonna create any sort of uh, pinch. You don't want the vacuum to not make it through the line. So you can see here, everything here is nice and loose. Um, it doesn't need to be pinched. It doesn't need to be so tight that it's, you know, clamping it down and creating a crease or anything like that. So hard line kit, done. Boost remnants adapter, done. Uh, check engine light plug for your blow off valve test, done. Chair cap on the intake, done. Uh, cold side, hot side, both done. Blow off valve tightened onto the V-band clamp, done. Intercooler installed, done. Crash bar back in, done. We're done, boys and girls. We are ready to put the bumper back on this thing. Um, we're gonna plug in a couple of lights, both sides, get the fog light plug-ins. You're gonna plug in the uh, sensor to the intercooler. You cannot forget the sensor to the intercooler or the lights. You're gonna forget, I'm telling you. Stop, pause, write it down, take a picture. I don't care what you gotta do. 
make sure you plug in both sets of lights make sure you plug in your intercooler plug before you go tightening up the last bit of your your bumper from there we're just hanging the nose cone putting all the clips back into the same places we already removed them from and uh that will be a wrap and so from there your uh most often times these customers that are doing this kind of an install for us are either adding a custom tune at this time or maybe you've gotten a tune revision for the new parts depending on what they've added we would usually take care of that get that installed go do our test drive bada boom bada bing so hopefully this has been a good uh lesson for you guys hopefully this has been a good instructional for you guys hopefully this is something where it helps you have the confidence to purchase our tornado kit as always if you need anything from us drop us a pm give us a call here at the shop send us an email um, sales at pp-fl.com check us out at www.pp-fl.com obviously subscribe here hit the notification bell all that good jazz look we love you guys we appreciate the support we're going to continue to do our best to bring you the best product that we can whether it be products like this or installation videos like this um, so thank you we appreciate you and until next time we'll see you guys soon. i am talking 100 percentage i need the only you rent it word Whoa. Step, step, step in the spotty and watch how they panic Yeah, we the duo, you know we dynamic When we outside, we be stopping the traffic Breaking their necks, them they upset How them boys doing more when they got left How they doing this and how they doing this Did you guys ever see Big Hero 6? Yeah, that's already Fa-la-la-la-la-la <laughs>